Okay, so let's recite together. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasa. Homage to the sublime, the victorious, and the totally self enlightened one. Okay, so today we're going to continue uh, just a little bit more about the classification of meta. And last week we have discussed about different classifications uh, of meta, and then we have separated them into different groups. And today uh, we have only one other uh, classification that is left from last week, and that is called the uh, Awini Boga and Wini Boga. So inseparable and separable. So today we're going to start with this. Now, what does it mean by inseparable and separable? So uh, literally, as the word says, in inseparable are those material properties that always arise together and cannot be separated. So whatever matter, whenever any kind of kalapa, kalapa is the smallest unit of um material property uh, so whatever kinds of smallest even the smallest kalapa it must always have these eight kinds of material properties that cannot be further separated and then the other types uh, can be separated meaning that sometimes depending on the type of meta what it is uh, they can be there or they cannot be there so uh, when we study chita we also uh, have learned about um we have chitta that arise together with some kinds of uh, universal chattasika that must always be there, no? So they always arise together and they always pass away together. So in terms of chitta, we may understand that those eight that are, cannot be further separated is called is are those in compare in comparison to chitta. We, we can call them the universals, and those that sometimes can be there and sometimes not can be occasional. So just like when we look at the chitta. Uh, when we first study chitta, then there is a chitta that must always arise with this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven chetasikas and one chitta uh, in one chitta. So eight of them must always arise together. So these are kind of the, let's say, in, in terms of meta, the inseparable. No? And then those occasionals are the ones that are sometimes, that depending on what kind of chitta, they can be there or they cannot be uh, there. Okay, so Avini Boga um, is the inseparables. It consists of eight types of material properties, and it is the and it forms the smallest unit of matter, which is called a kalapa. Now, when we said inseparable, now if you look at this graphic, it might be a little bit um, misguiding because you see like eight things stick together. No, so actually, uh, it it these eight little balls that stay that stay together, uh, it just wants to um, convey the idea that there are eight types of material properties that are in this kalapa, but they are not like uh, separated. So they are actually they are together, and um, so this eight of them, we say that they are not separable because they always arise together, they always pass away together. And any kind of matter, uh, they must consist of this eight, however small it is. And they are supported by the four uh, primary elements. They are uh, supported, held together, maintained, and distended by uh, these four um, primary elements. So earth, uh, water, fire, and air element are uh, four of these uh, inseparables here. Okay, so although we say that they are, cannot be separated, but because they are a combination of different material properties, so each of these material property has their own characteristic, and they can be known by the mind uh, separately. Yeah, when we say earth element, when we contemplate, then we know that it is the, the hardness or the softness. And uh, so with the mind, we can separate them. But physically, it is not separable. Is that clear until here? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's see what are the other four kinds of uh, matter that must always be there. So here we have smell, color, and taste, as well as the last one, nutriment. 
So any kind of material property, be it inside the body or outside the body, so internal matters or external matters, um, um, also living beings or non-living beings, so whatever it may be, it must always consist these four primary elements together with smell, with color, meaning the visibility, the, uh, the rupa that is uh, visible to the eye, uh, or what well, uh, for human being, the, the eye is limited now. So <laughs> the, sometimes there are things that we cannot see, but still this uh, vana or this rupa, this color um, matter is still there. Okay, then it, it will also, also always have a taste and new uh, nutriment as well. Okay, so as I just said, um, there are eight material, different material properties. So um, in this graphic, you see that it is like eight things, but we should understand that they are always together. So we should rather understand it like this way. So it's like one kalapa, smallest kalapa consists of these eight things. In Pali, they are called Sudha Taka. Sudha actually suda cut and then ataka ataka meaning eight no pure optic pure optate so uh, this pure meaning not that it is the not that the material property itself is pure but then it makes uh, it means that it is not mixed with other things so only this eight therefore it's called pure optic yeah not that the material property itself is pure but it says pure like like purely only that no not mixed with other things that's why it is called pure octet here Sudataka. Or sometimes it's ojo, also called oja tamaka, meaning a group with nutri nutritive as essence as the eighth. Oja, oja means the nu uh, nutritive essence or nutrition uh, as the number eight, um, uh, let's say the number eight member, or number eighth member of, of this group. So it is sometimes oh, it's called oja tamaka or sudataka. Uh, that you, you may find these two words, but they mean the same thing. It means the smallest kalapa that consists of these eight. Okay. So now we know that any material property is based on this uh, smallest, it's the uh, eight, uh, eight kind of material properties that's called the inseparable. And how about the separable ones? For example, if a material, uh, um, uh, let's say a kalapa that arises in a person, that arises in a living being or an animal living being, then it will always arise together with jivita with life uh, faculty, because it's alive, no? So in that case, um, it's called, G, uh, this type of um, meta, this type of kalapa is called jivita nawaka kalapa, white, uh, the vital non -it. So it consists of the eight avini boga, the eight inseparable, plus one jivita rupa, one uh, life faculty. Now, again, these graphics are only to demonstrate the idea, yeah. So we should understand that uh, it, there is no separation between this uh, life faculty and the eight inseparable when they arise together. So we should rather understand that, that it it arises uh, in this way, no? It can, it's kind of all together. But then I show it uh, in this graphic to um, make the difference between the inseparable and the separable uh, material property. Otherwise, if it is just like that, it's a like this. It's a little bit difficult to see what's the difference with the other one, yeah. Okay, so understand that there is no space here. They, they are all together when they arise. Okay, so here we are just only mentioning which types are separable and which types are inseparable and how they combine. We will talk more about the combinations in a future um, um, uh, section. Okay, let's introduce another one. Now, depending on uh, what kind of matter it is that arise in a living being, uh, that uh, kalapa will also be different. Let's say when it is an eye sensitivity, uh, this kalapa of eye sensitivity that arises in a living being, uh, besides light faculty, it will always of always. I mean, it will also have eye eye sensitivity, right? Because it is a rupa of eye sensitivity. So in this case, it will arise with this eight inseparable together with two separable, which is chivita and also um, eye sensitivity. And this type, it consists of 10 material property in this kalapa. So it's called the chaku dasaka kalapa. Dasa means 10. So chaku, eye, chaku, dasaka, kalapa, the eye decade. 
So together with the eight Aviniboga, inseparable, there is one Jivita and one Chakupasada, one eye sensitivity. Again, we need to understand that they arise together in the same way. Yeah. So just to give you another example, uh, say it is um, ear sensitivity, uh, um, kalapa of ear sensitivity, it will be the sota dasaka kalapa, eight aviniboga, one jivita, and one sota pasada. So one ear sensitivity. No? Now, these uh, inseparables, sometimes they are also... Um, they, sometimes they can combine with each other. Sometimes they do not. For example, if you look at this, um, this jiwita, life faculty um, material property, can arise together with ear sensitivity and it's necessary no? because it is in a living being. But you will never see eye sensitivity arise together with ear sensitivity. Right, because that doesn't make sense. It's either eye uh, sensitivity or is either ear sensitivity, is either tongue sensitivity, nose sensitivity, or body sensitivity. It cannot be both, right? So, in that case, uh, some of them are not com uh, compatible with each other. So, if you see here, um, this body sensitivity here, if if it arises together in this kalapa, then there will be no eye, no ear, no tongue, no nose sensitivity in the same one. Yeah. So then uh, it is same with the heart sensitivity. Oh, well, I sorry, with the heart based, and then with the uh, gender rupa as well. And sometimes, uh, well, sound it's it's a little bit different. Sound does not arise um, together. Uh, in this combination, I guess. But anyway, uh, what, which one can combine with which one later on in another uh, later section, we will talk about that. So here we are just introducing the separable and the inseparable. Okay, until here, all good? All right. Okay, so this is the eight inseparable Avini Boga. Uh, so all the other types of material property um, that we have introduced earlier, uh, the other 20 types, all of them are Winnie Boga, separable. So the inseparable eight and all the other ones are separable with different combinations and uh, later we will look at it. Okay, so until here, we have finished with the classification. So let's go to the origination of matter. So the Buddha explained that uh, for the uh, there are 18 types of um, material property that are called the concretely produced matter, right? So the concretely produced matter can be produced by four, uh, four kinds of causes. So it can be karma, chitta, uh, which is consciousness or mind, udu, temperature, and ahara, and, and, and nutrient. Uh, so it can be produced by these four things. Okay, so um sanda now wh when you look at this ahara uh, it is this nutriment it's a little bit different from that other nutriment that we just talked about that one is called oja yeah that's the nutri nutritive essence no that's called oja so uh, sometimes because of the english translation then it can be uh misleading but uh, there there are two things when we get to there then we'll, it will be clear also okay so there are four causes now these four causes directly uh, produce can directly produce some kind of material uh, property, some kind of some kind of matter, right? They can produce matter. Now there are um, in in the next graphic that we are going to look at, there are some other material properties which are not concretely produced. It will also be shown in that uh, graphic as well. But they are uh, not directly caused by this four thing, but they are conditioned by this four thing. Therefore, they are in the graphic as well. So let's look at it and you will know what I'm talking about. So if we look at it uh, in a table format, uh, now the first one we'll see, then there are these nine type of material properties, eye sensitivity, ear, nose, tongue, and body sensitivity, the two gender matter, life faculty, and heart base. This nine material property is always and only can be caused by karma. So no other things can produce, like that means a temperature cannot produce eye sensitivity or nutriment cannot produce eye sensitivity or um, uh, mind also cannot produce eye sensitivity. You know? So all these uh, nine types can only be produced by karma. Okay, then what, what is the next group? In the next group, we see 
Kaya Vinyati and Waji Vinyati. So these two intimate uh, intimation uh, matter, they are not concretely produced matter, but here it is said that it is caused by chitta. So we need to understand that it, they are uh, conditioned by chitta. So when the mind, when there is an idea uh, that we want to uh, um, communicate some some idea uh, to some other people through the body, like through signs or through words, then in that time, then the mind itself, because of chitta, because of this intention, then my pro the mind produce some kind of material property. Uh, let's say when we talk, when we say something, then it produce some kind of material property in uh, the throat area. And, and this material property uh, hits the other material property that is around the uh, vocal cord. So it produces sound. So, uh, and, and so you will see the next group sound is also uh, related to mind as well as temperature, as well as temperature. So in this case, um, with mind, uh, with the conditioned conditioned by mind, then this body intimation and verbal intimation uh, can be produced and also can, uh, is conditioned, let's say. And then the, with chitta and with udu and with temperature, then sound is being produced. Sound, why it is not in the Avini Boga? I think because it is uh, actually caused by uh, uh, chitta. It's caused by mind. When we say something, when, when we produce sound, when we sing a song, when we do something, it's because of the mind. Mind produce some kind of material property, and then that material property inside the throat um, uh, get into contact with other material properties, and then sound is being produced. Otherwise, if we keep quiet, then um, then this kind of sound does, is not being produced. Now, how about udu? Now, material properties that exist outside, outside the, the body, outside the living being is mostly produced by temperature. So say when we drop something or when we, um, when two things, uh, uh, when two things hit together. So this type of material of sound is being produced by um, temperature, right? Okay, so, so sound uh, is not inherent in all kinds of material properties. It's only when it is produced by chitta and by udu. All right. So let's go to the next group. The next group are the three types of um, uh, material property. Well, it's actually, uh, they are not concrete, concretely produced matter, but they are some kind of aspect of matter. So lightness, softness, and flexibility. So these three are conditioned not directly produced, but conditioned by mind. When the mind is uh, uh, wholesome, let's say, then when we feel happy, then the body is also light, it's also flexible, it's also soft. Yeah, So this we can understand. And by temperature as well, when the climate is good, will the body also feel, feel good? And ahara, nutriment as well. When we eat something uh, good, uh, nutri uh, nutritious, then also the body, it will help the body to feel lightness, softness, and flexibility. So all these are not caused by karma, but instead it's caused by the other three causes. Can be either by chitta, by udu, temperature, or by uh, nutriment, ahara. Yeah. Okay. The next group. Now this next group you will see is actually the... Um, Eight inseparable, as well as space element. Yeah. So space element is also not a concretely produced material uh, matter because uh, it does not actually exist. It's just the space uh, that delimited uh, delimited one kalapa from another kalapa, and that space between two kalapas are called the space element. Uh, it's called space here. Yeah. Okay. So this nine type up uh, can be produced by any of the four causes can be produced by karma, can be produced by chitta, can be produced by temperature, can be produced by uh, nutriment as well. So four causes, it can be caused by four causes. Say um, matter, they also do not arise alone, right? So if eye sensitivity arises, now we have already seen in the uh, kalapa, if there is eye sensitivity, there will, in a living being, there will also be um, this life faculty, together with this eight inseparable, right? So it's a uh, kalapat with 10 elements there, with 10 material properties there. 
So in that case, because it is together with eye sensitivity, so it is produced by karma. So karma produced this eye sensitivity kalapa, yeah? So chaku dasaka, this uh, eye uh, uh, dacket. So this eye dacket, uh, all these material properties here are also produced by karma together with the eye uh, sensitivity and life faculty. Now, sometimes when it is things that are uh, external, uh, let's say, uh, material things that are um, not connected with the living being, let's say um, a book, a pen, etc. All those, it also consists of the uh, basic eight inseparables, right? So those things are caused by uh, temperature, by wudu. So therefore, these types here, it can be uh, produced by uh, any of these four uh, causes. Okay, now the next group is um, actually not uh, really um, a, a material property again, but the um, characteristics of um, of matter, right? The uh, uh, when it is being produced, when it exists, two produced, one exists, and then the, the passing away of this material property, this characteristic. So this four is not caused by any cause, but just the characteristics of matter, right? So there is no cause, none, no cause for this uh, last uh, group, which are four of them. Okay, so we see all together for. Um, Kama, the 18 types of material uh, properties can be produced by Kama. And uh, 15 types can be produced by Chita, 13 by uh, temperature, and 12 by Ahara, uh, nutriment. Okay, so now here we, we see um, the, in this graphic, then it's easy to understand what is produced by what. Now, just a little bit, uh, we'll go back to last week. Uh, edits, quest, uh, not the questions, comment about this upadina and anupadina. So those material properties that are classified into clung to or karma produced and anupadina, not clung to or not being produced, not being produced by karma. It is 18 of them, which is uh, nine of them are only produced by karma, we just saw. And these other nine can be produced by karma as well as other material uh, other causes in Abhidhamma, these 18 altogether are called Upadina, are called Kama produced material property. So last week, Edith, Edith said that whether this uh, group can uh, should be duplicated and be in this part as well, it will be together with the Anupadina as well. So here I just want to clarify it because uh, uh, we read again in the text and then it says that uh, this classification is not mutually exclusive. So that means that uh, if you look at um, this graphic again, you see that it can be produced by other causes. So of course, when it is not produced by karma, it can be produced by chitta, it can be produced by udu, it can be produced by ahara. But in this classification, um, uh, the Buddha only wants to say that upadina, when we talk in Abhidhamma terms, he, he on, uh, this classification, we only mean these 18 types. And this other, these other 10 types are called Anupadina as a classification, but not uh, like exactly how it functions. No, it's just a, a different classification in, you know, in uh, uh, for these terms. Is that okay? Yeah, I think, I think it means that um, these other types cannot be uh, produced by karma. by karma. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to karma originated matter. So now we say that there are four causes, right? We have karma, we have the temperature, we have chitta, mind, and then we have uh, uh, nu nutriment. So uh, these four causes, now we're going to look at them uh, one by one. And so first we're going to look at karma first. Okay, so in this section, uh, it will be more clear of how karma produced matter. Okay, everyone ready for uh, this section? We're we going to start, yeah, okay, all good. All right. Okay. So, as Austin just said, karma, uh, it's it's action, no, but it's also chitta, no. So when we um, do some good actions, wholesome actions or unwholesome actions, um, it produces something. Yeah. So we're going into details now. So karma, it produces uh, vipaka chitta as well, right? It produces uh, um, resulting consciousness, but also it can produce kamaja rupa. So matter that is uh, produced by uh, kama. 
So which we have already seen are these night types, night types of material properties here. Okay, so before we get into uh, this night type of material properties, let's define a little bit our comma here. So comma, wholesome and unwholesome actions uh, that we do day to day all the time when we are uh, when we are saying something, when we are, uh, so we have physical uh, physical action, um, we have the verbal actions and we have mental actions. No? So these three types consist of, uh, com consist comma, right? Now to be precise, comma is, what is it? It's the mental volition that accompanies these three types of actions. Physical action, verbal action, and mental action, either whether they are wholesome or unwholesome. So this volition, chetana, is precisely what is meant by karma. Okay, so now, uh, just as a revision, I will repeat this a little bit again. When we talked about cheetahs, uh, we know that there are four classes of cheetah according to its nature. So we have kusala cheetah and akusala cheetah. Uh, when we say something, when we do something, when we think something with a wholesome mind uh, or with an unwholesome mind, we are planting seeds, right? We are creating karma, actually. So that's actually kusala karma and akusala karma itself. So these are two types of cheetahs. And then we have also another types of cheetahs, which are resultant consciousness. So these are result of what? Result of either wholesome or either unwholesome. Yeah, when we do something wholesome, then there will be kusala vipaka cheetah will arise later on. Or when we do something unwholesome, then a kusala vipaka cheetah will, uh, will arise as the result of that later on, right? Okay, then we have kriya cheetah, functional. Functional cheetahs meaning those that are neither cause nor they are uh, result. So they are just only functioned like the uh, five door turning consciousness, etc. No, so those types that only performed a function. Or when on the other hand, um, a totally enlightened being, when uh, the per when that uh, enlightened being do something good, uh, do something wholesome, uh, we do not call that wholesome anymore. Of course, they will never do anything unwholesome, but whatever uh, good deeds they do, uh, since it does not uh, create um, uh, re uh, vipaka, a uh, result anymore, so they are called functional. So that, that's included in this type of chitta, which we have already studied in chapter one and two. Okay, so now here, let's look at uh, akusala kama and kusala kama, which is important here. So we said it is the chitana, the chitana that accompanies this kind of action, right? Okay, so what result will they give? They will give two types of results. They will give vipaka, uh, chitas. So consciousness, result, resulting consciousness, and it will also produce some kinds of karma, uh, karma jarupa, karma produced material properties can also be produced by this wholesome and unwholesome karma. So let's look at it. Now, when we say <coughs> akusala karma, then the, or it's accompanied by 12 kinds of um uh, unwholesome cheetahs, right? So whatever we do that is uh, unwholesome, um, it's either associated with the eight loba mula chitta, uh, uh, consciousness associated with greed, or two, consciousness that is associated with uh, dosa, or two, that is uh, purely associated with uh, moha, right? So this, there are 12 types of uh, mundane, uh, 12 types of, of course, uh, it's always mundane akusala. So 12 types of uh, akusala um, kama here. And how about in the kusala side? When we do something good, when we are perform some uh, generosity, when we are nice to other people, uh, with loving kindness, when we have compassion, um, when we help people, or what what other, or when we practice meditation, so these types of um, actions or karma, wholesome karma, are associated with the eight types of mundane. Uh, sense fear, kusala chitta, right? So there are eight types uh, of this. Um, um, uh, mundane uh, kusala kama and then we have five types that are not associated with the senses but associated with the jhana chitta right so those are also mundane they are not uh, enlightened chittas um, but they are wholesome as well when we practice the samatha meditation and attain some kinds of jhana so there are five levels uh, for the rupa uh, vachara jhana um, the five material sphere uh, Jhana, so there are five of these types of um, kusala 
uh, kama. And then we have four, uh, which is associated with the arupa jhana, right, immaterial jhana. So all together, uh, all these are called, uh, they are mundane kama that will produce some kind of result in the future, right? Whatever uh, unwholesome things we do, wholesome things that we do in our daily life or uh, in the meditation when we attain jhana and so on. So all this, uh, this chitana here, it will produce result. So altogether, we have 12 in the Akusala sign and 17 in the Kusala sign. But now, since we are talking about um, metta, um, kama that produce metta, we have to exclude the four arupa jhana here. Because where uh, uh, does arupa jhana um, give rebirths? In the arupa realm, right? Uh, uh, when a when person, let's say a human being, uh, attained the... Um, non-material jhana, then when he passed away, when it uh, when this result give a rebirth, I mean, when this uh, karma give a rebirth, it will give rebirth in the four non-material planes only. Yeah. So there, since it is non-material, there is no rupa at all there. So therefore, this four arupa jhana chitta is not, uh, will not produce any kind of uh, kamaja rupa, karma produced material property. Yeah, that's clear, right? Okay, so in that case, we have to exclude it for, so among the karma, mundane karma that causes rupa in the future are only these other types, which are uh, 12 akusala and 13 uh, mundane kusala karma. So all together, 25 uh, uh, of them. So the chitana, the volition that accompanies these 20, 25 types of chitas produce what it produces. It, it, it creates karma, yeah? so past karma. So with this past karma, once done, then in a future, in a future time, uh, not, not in the exactly same time when the karma is being produced, but in a later time, in a later on time, uh, it will, um, uh, these 25 types of karma are capable of producing Rupa, uh, these nine types of material property uh, in the future. All good until here? Yes? Okay. Um, I, I, sorry, I just wanted to ask, um, for example, the, the jhana kind of kusala, uh, kusala volitions, or uh, would they also uh, create um, matter um, in, in, let's say, human word mm. um okay now uh, it is precisely where we're going next so let's take a look at the next slide now we are saying that uh these 25 types of past karma when does it produce material pro this mat karma ja rupa when does it produce this material properties right okay so we have seen that um karma when we explain the section of uh, explained in the section of karma, let's say when the karma is done here in now after in let's say uh, in this present life when it is done here, the result can uh, happen in this present life and all the way throughout samsara. It is possible, right? It can it can produce result from from after the karma is done throughout samsara any time when the conditions are fulfilled. Now. During this time, so in this javana and these seven javanas, um, if it is, um, uh, let's say, a jhana, uh, chitta, uh, so jhana, jhana, jhana here, uh, it, at this time, when it is working here, it will never produce kamaja rupa at the same time because kamaja rupa can only be produced later on. It does not arise at the same time when chitta arises, no, when that uh, chitta arises. Now, Edith uh, was asking them whether it will produce um, a material property in this in this lifetime, right? So if, uh, uh, concerning jhana, uh, I don't think so. Um, if it is abhinya, I think it can produce material property. It can create material property. But uh, if we talk about this eye sensitivity or ear sensitivity, then it will be produced in the next life. So not, not in this uh, present life. When we talk about, uh, let's say, uh, um, heart base. So let's go back to this graphic. Heart base and gender matter and all this. These are produced uh, when the karma produces a new rebirth. 
this Kamajarupa are being produced together with the Patisandichita. But sometimes there are also, uh, not talking about jhana anymore, uh, some other kind of um, um, kama. Uh, there are cases, when we study sutta, then we will find cases that also uh, this kama jarupa, oh, sorry, can be produced uh, during uh, this present lifetime. So there was a sutta that explained, um, I don't remember exactly the name of the person, sorry about that, but the story goes like um, there was... Um, uh, man, a person, uh, a male. Um, so once he was um, uh, around um, a riverside and um, by chance he saw an arahat um, bathing in, in the river. And at that time, uh, with some Ahusala thoughts, then he thought that, um, uh, oh, this uh, this person, well, I think he might not know that he, he was an arahat, no? So that this person uh, looks so beautiful and uh, I would take him as my wife. So he had some kinds of these Akusala thoughts uh, that arose in him at that time. Then after that, um, because of that Akusala a mind that was generated there, and then that person was a, an arahat. So it is a very big offense to have this kind of uh, unwholesome thoughts towards um, uh, such respectable uh, person. So because of that bad karma, uh, that uh, man, that male himself, um, because he was saying that he would take him as a wife and all this, they, in that time, he became a, a woman in that life and was taken as a wife by someone else. So this karma produced it, uh, um, this um, um, some changes in his body and he became uh, a, a female for that lifetime. So there is this uh, sutta that uh, you, you, you can find um, in the text. And so it shows that the karma that is done in this present lifetime can also produce material property in this present lifetime as well. So not only when it produces rebirth, but concerning jhana, um, I have to confirm, but I think um, it does not produce this kind of eye, ear, nose, and this kind of sensitivity. Is that okay, Edith? Yeah, I was just thinking maybe Dana could cause um, not not this type of matter, but just tranquility in the body, flexibility and lightness and such. That's that's what I was thinking more. Mm, that will be um, that will be produced by chitta, not produced by karma. Any kind of wholesome chitta uh, that will produce also some kind of material property. Uh, that that uh, the, like those lightness, lightness and when we are doing something wholesome like those those are um, uh, produced by chitta itself so chitta generated um uh, material property not karma generated it will come in the next section okay all right so uh let's continue a little bit about the karma produced matter but i think uh maybe uh it's quite a lot of information today so we should take a break here so uh, let's rest for five minutes and coming back we'll continue with uh, the karma produced matter yes mila i just want to ask a quick question it's not exactly related uh, to abhidhamma but um the word wholesome and unwholesome i was trying to translate it into ukrainian Mm -hmm. It just says beneficial and harmful. Would you say mm -hmm. that that's a good translation or no? Mm. Or mm. Um, no. Uh, when I first hear it, I would say yes, but then uh, yeah. I will have to think about it uh, um, um, more uh, in order to 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 see whether it is suitable. Maybe if yeah, if anybody has ideas or. I just want to capture the meaning and I feel mm -hmm. like, I don't know, yeah. maybe the dictionary is not. So, yeah, that's me. why, you know, sometimes um, that's why it is important that we keep the words in Pali. So Kusala mm -hmm. and Akusala. Kusala means skillful. Yeah. So something that is skillful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Akusala is something that is not skillful. And uh, mm -hmm. so um, uh, if I'll you try go skillful. back... Yeah, skillful. If you go back to um to the um, 
first, I think the first chapters or so in the videos, you may find that the, uh, the that more detailed explanation about what is kusala, what is meant by kusala, what is meant by akusala. So akusala, are those actions that bring us more and more to the uh, uh, ignorance, to craving, to attachment, uh, to um, aversion, and so on, all those actions that are related to that. And uh, kusala are the opposite, right? So in that case, uh, 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 we we try to always use the Pali word so that uh, there is no confusion because of uh, translation, because of another kind of language. Because sometimes there are some new ones, uh, uh, different new ones and new ones in in different language uh, for words. No? Yeah, and you you say that uh, beneficial and unbeneficial and harmful is not exactly. Sounds good. I think it sounds good too. Ah. But uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, I mean, initially, I I think it sounds good, but needs a little more think think uh, thinking about about it. Super. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, because with translation, it's always like something you have to define again. Now, what do you define by beneficial? What do you define by harmful, right? So again, it comes to uh, more um, the details. All right, so let's rest for five minutes and coming back, we will continue. Okay, welcome back everyone. Okay, so uh, we have been talking about the karma produced material property, uh, well, karma produced matter. So these 25 types of karma that we just look at will produce some karma jarupa, karma produced um, material property or matter. Uh, let's look at when. No? So when the karma produced a new rebirth, this Kamaja Rupa are produced together with the Patisandhi Chitta. So if you remember um, the death process or the rebirth process, let's take a look as a revision, then we will see how and when they are being produced. Okay, so let's say a person is about to pass away. So in the last um, um, men, uh, uh, mental process. So there will be Bawanga, Bawanga, Bawanga at some point, mind door averting consciousness. Now we are taking uh, this deaf, um, uh, deaf uh, mental process. Uh, there can be many types we have seen already. So just as an example here, five Javanas and it ends uh, with uh, j five Javana and then Chuti. Yeah. So when deaf, when this deaf consciousness Chuti arised, then until here, uh, it, that is called, that is what we call the past life, right? Then Right after Chuti Chitta, then immediately Pati Sandhi Chitta rebirth consciousness will arise. And that marks the beginning of uh, the present life. So with this Pati Sandhi Chitta, after uh, arising of the Pati Sandhi Chitta, there will be 15 to 16 Bawanga that will arise continuously. And then it starts the first mental process of this uh, present life or this new life, which is called the Bawa Nikantika Witi. And we have studied this in the previous um um, chapters, so we'll not repeat it again. But here uh, we want to see how um, matter are being produced by karma uh, together at the during the party Sunday time. Yeah, okay. So right after Chuti Chita uh, passed away, then party Sunday Chita arise, and at this same time, what happened is that in the party Sunday moment, together with party Sunday Chita and its associated Chetasika, three groups of ten material properties arise together. And they are all kamaja rupa, no? Or um, rupa that is produced by the kama that produced this patisandichita. So uh, say a human being, so that must be a wholesome uh, action that produced, wholesome kama that produced this uh, vipaka chitta um, as the rebirth consciousness of this new life. And then this same karma, it produced some kind of uh, kamaja rupa. Now here we said three groups of 10 material properties. What does it mean? So 10 material properties, meaning there's this group that consists of 10 material properties inside. The first one is called Kaya Dasaka Kalapa, the body decket. So eight inseparable together with life faculty and body sensitivity, right? 
And then we have the second group that's called the Hadaya Dasaka Kalapa, heart decade. So eight inseparable together with um, life faculty, together with heart based. And as well as uh, the Bawa Dasaka Kalapa, so gender decade, so either male uh, or female uh, gender. Uh, matter will also be produced already at this time. So in the Pati Sandi moment. Okay, so now let's uh, let's take a look. If you remember, then a cheetah, the lifespan of a cheetah is of three moments, right? Three sub-moments, a rising moment, existing moment, and dissolving moment. Now, this um, uh, karma, karma jarupa are so powerful that it actually produced a material property in each sub-moment, in each sub-moment of the chitta. I mean, together with the chitta. So from Pati Sandi time, and uh, later on the 15 and 16 Bawanga, and it continues, continues. Let's zoom in a little bit to see how karma jarupa is being produced. So say in the arising moment of the first Patisandichita of the first chitta in this lifetime, Patisandichita, then three groups of 10 material properties are being produced in the arising moment of, of uh, Patisandi. Then in the um, uh, uh, existing moment, another three groups uh, are being produced again. And then in the um, in the uh, the um, decaying, decaying or the dying moment of the uh, seizing moment, sorry, seizing moment of Patisandichita, another uh, three groups are being produced again. In the same way, in the Bawanga moment, second, which is the second Chita in this lifetime, also is being produced and is being produced and is being produced. So it keeps going on and going on. And this time, at this time. Okay, so let's say total three groups in the arising moment. Then... In the next moment, it's not just only these three group anymore. So there will be six because these three is still exist, right? Remember that material property exists for how long? It exists for 17 mind moment, no? So that's 51 sub moment, yeah? Okay, so at that time, the, in, the, in the arising uh, moment, only three groups. And then in the existing moment, there are already six group. Then in the seizing moment, uh, three of each, so nine of them. And then again, uh, it will again, 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 uh, in the next one, 12, 15, 18, 21, and so, and so on until the 17th mind moment, there will be here, there will be, there will be 51 a group of this one and of this uh, gender matter, 51 group of this heart base and 51 group of the body uh, sensitivity uh, in, in already in this 17 moment. So it's growing really, really very rapidly, you know, this matter. So at this point, there is 153 groups in here already. Okay, so what happened in the next moment? So after the 17, uh, my moment, I mean 17 chitta, the 18th chitta, at this point, what happened here? Now, there are already 51 that already exist here, right? So, we and at this arising moment of the Manodo Arawa Jana Chita here, another group will arise again. So, plus one that just arise at this moment. And the first one that is being produced in the arising moment of Pati Sandi Chita, it will cease at that time because it has passed it, its lifespan already, right? So, is 51 plus one that just arise and plus one that just ceased. So that's 51 plus one minus one, yeah? So again, at this moment, there will be again 51 group in this case. And again, the next one uh, and the heart base as well and body um, and the body sensitivity as well. Okay, now this, um, <clears throat> this only shows you, this graphic only shows you how they arise and how they cease. But actually, at each moment, not only one kalapa is being produced at a time. So many, many kalapas are being produced at each sub-moment according to the karma of that person. So this, this calculation, this 153 and this 51, is only for us to understand how they arise and when they how they exist and when they cease. Uh, but it's much, much more than that much more because kalapa, chitta arise only one at a time, but metta, they arise uh, um, a lot 
it, a lot can arise at the same time. Therefore, we see masses. No, if it is only one kalapa at a time, then the it, it is so tiny, then we will never see a mass, right? So therefore, for meta, they arise a lot at the same time. So it's much more than fifty one uh, of each group, right? So this is just to show you how how they arise and how they cease. Yes, Austin, you have a question. Um, just to clarify, clarify the, the, the what is seizing on the um like in a, in every uh three uh, or the third one um um uh, what exactly is seizing because it's getting carried forward so the the rupa is getting carried forward and chitta is seizing and I just thought I would clarify that yeah okay so this karma produced material property is not directly related with uh, the uh, with this chitta that is arising together. It's not being produced by this chitta, right? So we are only seeing at the uh, in in the rebirth moment when this patisandhi chitta arise. At the same time, how many types of material property are also arising at the same time? that are produced by karma. Yeah. So okay, until here in the fifty one moment. Uh, uh, 51 sub moment here. That means the 17 uh, chitta has already passed. Uh, in that period of time, the first three groups of uh, ten uh, of the of the ten uh, material property that has ten elements in it. Uh, this one that arrived here arrived to its full lifespan here. It has this one that arrives here have already lived its 51 sub moment. So in here, it will pass, it, it will cease. It will be no more, this material property. And then, so this, uh, this of course, this is to carry on here because it's still existing. So it's still existing. And at the same time, three new is being produced. So there are six here. And then this, this, this one that are produced here still carry on here. This one that produced it in the arising moment and the, I mean, uh, the existing moment carry on and new one is being produced. So here will be three groups and three groups and three groups altogether nine, or let's say. So in the same way, it will be carry on, carry on. So until the 17th uh, uh, chitta, so the seizing moment of the 17th chitta, there would be, let's say you know, we, we only talk about these three groups. Huh? So there will be 51 group of uh, gender matter, 51 group of heart-based and 51 group of uh, uh, body sensitivity uh, matter in, in, in the, at this moment, at this uh, seizing moment of the 17th chitta, right? So in the arising moment of the 18th chitta, since Kamajarupa produces it all the time, no, in the three moments, every, every sub-moment it's being produced. So a new one will be produced, but, the one that is produced 51 a moment ago uh, reached its full lifespan and it will cease. So therefore, it's 50, 51 plus 1 minus 1 here. Is that a bit more clear? Okay. All right. Okay, so remember, this is just we understand how it works, but it's much more, uh, much more material uh, property will arise uh, depending on the karma of that person. Okay. All right, so in the same way, throughout the lifespan of this uh, person as a human being, so every, every, every sub-moment of, uh, of a chitta, so, so now we're talking about karma produced material property here, yeah? is not directly related to chitta, uh, related to chitta because it's not chitta produced matter. We're talking about karma produced matter. Uh, it, we talk about chitta here because we refer to the time of when it arises, right? So in each sub-moment, it will keep arising and arising and arising. And when the fetus in the, in the mother's womb, when it grow, then later on at some point, eye um, um, sensitivity, ear sensitivity, and also the nose sensitivity and other kind of uh, karma produced matter will also arise in the person. Yeah, so it will be more, much more groups than this than the ones that you see in the graphic because it's not possible to to make everything <laughs> into um, graphics. So therefore, it's just say it's etc. of karma, ja rupa. So it will be produced throughout the life of this person. 
in each sub moment, in each uh, sub moment until the, the person passed away, until actually in, very interesting here, the Kamaja Rupa will actually stop when? When the person is about to die, so 17 moments before Chuti Chitta arrives, Kamaja Rupa will stop uh, producing, will stop producing, uh, will stop being produced. 17 moment before, 17 my moment before Chitta, uh, Chuti Chitta arrives. So say, if you look at this graphic, it will be clear. It will be easy to understand. Chuti Chitta is here. So we count back 17 Chittas. And in the arising moment of this Chitta, no more new Kamaja Rupa will arise. Kamaja Rupa will, will stop arising here. And those that are being produced in the ceasing moment of uh, the last, uh, at the time of the last Chitta at the time, those ones, those Kamaja Rupa will uh, exist uh, until uh, exactly to the ceasing moment of Chuti Chitta and they will all cease together at that time. So all Kama produced material property will cease together with Chuti Chitta. And that is the end of the, that lifetime of that person. And in Patisandi, uh, if the person is not another hand, so a rebirth will occur. And at that time, in the Patisandi Chitta, then in the arising moment, again, uh, another uh, karma will produce some other karma produced material property, like in the last lifetime, and it will uh, repeat the, um, the same process again. Okay, so here, this graphic just uh, want to show you that uh, when Kama Jarupa start arising, at Patisanti moment, and when it stopped arising, and it arised when, so all, all the time, throughout the lifetime, in each sub-moment of a chitta, it arises together, and then it will cease 17 my moment before Chuti Chitta arise. So that's the information concerning uh, Kamaja Rupa. Okay, I hope it's clear. I think today connection is not very good. I see everyone's face quite uh, like maybe frozen, the, the, the camera there. Uh, yes, Edith, you have a question? No, no, no question. It's just uh, I I I started to have like a question, but then uh, it it was clear. Mm -hmm. I, was, um, I was wondering like why uh, Kama, Kama Jarupa is not there until the life ends and then I realized no it's just it just stop arising new ones right 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 yeah so, so here all this in order to not to make the graphic too crowded and too full of stuff so uh, I, I stop um, like stop arising new ones stop arising but of course this one still exists until this time and it sits together with the uh, Chuti Chita at the same time Okay, so if you look at this graphic again, yeah. it will keep arising, arising, and until this moment, 17 my moments before Chuti Chita arise, and at this point, it will stop arising new ones, but this one still exists, and just exactly in the uh, seizing moment of the 17, of the, um, of the Chuti Chita, on the 17 moments later, after here, in the seizing moment of Chuti Chita, those that arise, the one that arise here, the last one that arose will uh, will finish its lifespan here. So it will all every single uh, Kamaja Rupa that, are, that is being produced will cease together with the uh, 17th, uh, with the, well, not 17, with the Chuti Chita here. Yes, because the mind needs the Hadaya uh, as a base as well. So many. Uh, the mind. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get. Yeah, yeah. That. So the mind needs the heart base, right? Until the end, basically. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's still here. Still, still there. Still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, uh, here we are only talking about Kama Jarupa, right? So Kama produced material property here. And uh, of course, at the, uh, in, in this graphic, we, are, we haven't shown the Chitta produced matter and temperature produced matter and also nutrient produced matter also. So we, there will be much more, much more matter uh, in this graphic that yeah, I, I don't think it will fit here, but it will, everything will be here. 
So, um, so far we have only discussed about um, karma produced matter, how it arises. So the important thing uh, to know here is that it arises um, starting from the arising moment of Patisandichita, and then it keep arising throughout uh, the lifetime of the person in each sub moment, in each uh, sub moment of mind, no, each sub moment it arises um, uh, in one chitta moment. So three, uh, I mean, three sub moment keeps arising until 17 moments before the Chuti Chitta arise. So that's um, the information that we need to uh, remember for Kamaja Rupa. So it's quite amazing how the na how nature works, yeah. Origination of meta, it's a little bit more complex when we talk about uh, like in each moment and how it is being produced. And so, although it, I think it's really beautiful, like how it all comes to, to like perfect sense, like how it arised and when it stopped arising and how and so on. Uh, I think it's quite amazing, but uh, it's also uh, a lot of information. So I think I will stop here today and I will not go to uh, the chitta produced meta and we'll leave that for next week. And uh, at the moment, I will just stop sharing screen first and so I can see you better. Okay, yeah. All right, so uh, next week, uh, we will continue with uh, mind-produced matter and uh, also uh, temperature and also nutrient-produced matter. So in the same way, in more details, we will look at the other three causes of, um, of matter. So yeah. let's um, dedicate our merits for the... Um, arising of Maga and Fala Nyana, which uh, leads to Nibbana, which is Nibbana, which take Nibbana as a subject. And uh, we also share merits to all beings. Okay. Itam no punyam maga fala nyana sa pacheyo hotu. Itam no punyam maga fala nyana sa pacheyo hotu. Itam no punyam maga fala nyana sa pacheyo hotu. Itam no punyam niba. Sorry, Sava Satanam Baji Mang. Itam no punyam Sava Satanam Baji Mang. Itam no punyam Sava Satanam Baji Mang. Sadu, Sadu, Sadu. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so I'll see you on Sunday next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you.